The first hole, uh, it's 116 yards, it's called the Warren. We have a long thin green to open with. Two bunkers guard the front of the green, uh, left and right. Basically, it's, it's playing a, a little wedge or just under, but you, you can't hit it left. There's a big bank down the left-hand side and you'll end up in the trees. There is a ridge in the middle of the green, which really causes problems. Anything but the perfect shot will actually go left or right and uh, you could be in trouble. Rhodey's Bank, it's uh, 114 yards, statistically plays the easiest hole championship week over the years. Very flat green, probably the flattest green here. There's two bunkers just short and there's a little ditch just short of the green as well. It's a reasonably big green and being flat it does offer a birdie putt and at 114 yards it's perfect yardage for most of the guys just to hit a sandwich in there. Hole 3 is 124 yards, elevated tee again. We have two big bunkers just short of the green, about five yards short of the green, so it's not actually on the, on the edge. And a green that slopes back to front. So um, if you go just past the pin, normally it will stop dead or screw back down the hill slightly. Um, the problem with the green sloping back to front is wherever you are on the green, you will have a slopey, bendy putt, uh, which is the feature of the, of the third hole. There again, it does play reasonably easy because it's, it's quite a big green as well. It's nowhere near as small as some of the others. The fourth hole at Nailcott is the Emerald Isle. Uh, it just proves that you don't need to have any sort of length on a par three. It's played 86 yards and uh, there's out of bounds over the back of the green and it's a saucer uh, shaped green up 10 saucer. So you know you've got to be very pre uh, precise to get it on the green and hopefully not spin it back into the bunker. There's three bunkers guarding the green. There's the one on the left, one on the right and then there's one just short which is a new bunker I believe and uh, brings in a nice front pin position. The fifth hole at Nailcott Needle's Eye is uh, a really tricky hole. Uh, you've got a big bunker facing you, and it's a big pop bunker. The, the lip's very steep, it's like something that you would get on a Lynx golf course. You've got trees left, trees right, so obviously, hence the name, you know, you've got to thread it through the trees. If it hits the trees, it can ricochet anywhere. In the middle of the green is, is where you want to be, really. I hit a little wedge into the wind because the wind was really gusting through the trees there so it was just nice, a nice little wedge and hold it up there. The six hole Jacklands Falls is, uh, is, a, is a hole that you could dread really to be honest because uh, it plays 117 yards, it's a two tiered green. Go over the green and you're out of bounds, uh, come up short and there's uh, a bunker to the left and a bunker short. and. You know, if you come up short and you've got to put up the slope, it's really difficult to, to judge the pace. But the biggest hazard is the big tree that hangs over the green. And uh, I had a wedge there today and a lovely shot right down the flag. It's hit the tree and come straight down back to the front edge of the green. And you know, you, you'll stare a three put in the, in the face. Nailcut falls because of the water feature that's behind the seventh and it's, um, you know, it's one of the longer holes on the golf course, it's 133 yards. It's slightly uphill so it definitely plays at least a club longer in my opinion. And uh, the way the wind's been playing in the last few days, it's actually playing even longer than that. So it's between a 7 or an 8 iron. The water definitely comes into play both in front of and behind the hole. So distance control is absolutely crucial. But even if you find the putting surface, depending on where you are in relation to the hole, you can actually be left with you know, a putt that uh, is you know, making you three or even four putt in some cases. I played with three amateur partners today and uh, they, they struggle with the greens. The eighth hole's uh, named Twin Oaks and it's only 108 yards, but it's an elevated green and uh, nothing but hitting the surface will do. Clubbing is absolutely critical. With the winds as it is today, that makes it a difficult uh, target to hit because it's a very small green. Once you've found the surface, the green's relatively flat, but uh, it's not one of those holes you want to uh, dally with. I was in the water twice today. It's, it's difficult. The water's just behind the green, and if you don't get it quite right, then it just hops over and uh, you unfortunately have a watery grave. It's Mooley's Bridge as it's called, it's, um, it's 146 yards, it's undoubtedly the hardest hole on the golf course in my opinion, particularly when it's uh, such a pressurised situation as the last hole. It's slightly uphill, like the seventh hole, and it always plays a little bit longer. 
Today it was playing into the wind and it was probably between a six and a seven iron. Just to get some control as much as anything, again, very narrow. If you don't get the clubbing right, it's almost impossible to make an up and down unless you're very lucky or very skillful. I enjoy the hole, I think it's a great test and in fact it would grace any golf course.